Good morning. This is Scooter Pops. Thanks for joining me today. It's a balmy 40 plus degrees, maybe 50 by now, but it was quite cold this morning. Hence the hoodie, or as we called them years ago, the sweatshirt. And you can notice that I'm on four wheels today and not my C650 maxi scooter, my BMW, which I absolutely adore. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, later today, I'm going to take you for a tour of my most favorite place in my current hometown of Mesa, Arizona, and that's the Downtown Historic District. It is beautiful down there, it has a rich history, so I think you'll really enjoy. And in addition to that, I'm going to give you a little idea of who Scooter Pops really is, where I was born, where I grew up, and how I got to Mesa, Arizona. So stay tuned, and thanks for joining us today. Welcome to Mesa, Arizona, established back in the mid to late 1800s. The Hohokam people actually lived here first, prior to its name Mesa, Arizona. And then Daniel Webster Jones and another partner led a group of Mormon people from St. George, Utah to actually settle down here and establish the city. The city has grown in the last 22 years that I've lived here by over 100,000 people. When I moved here, the population was about 350,000 and today it sits around 459,000 plus. So you can see the growth is huge. And the reason being is mostly because of the weather and the economy is actually pretty good here too. There's a lot of growth in the Phoenix metropolitan area, and Mesa happens to be the largest suburban city in the United States. It's bigger than Minneapolis and St. Louis. Benedictine University is growing. They have five locations throughout the United States. My favorite music shop is also here on Main Street, Milano's Music. They were established back in 1946. Locally owned and operated, Tom Schultz actually makes drums, me being a drummer. I do have one of his snare drums, which I absolutely love. The quality is amazing, and of course the workmanship and the sound is awesome. So we're going to make a right turn here on Robson Road, and we're going to park in the back and walk you through Main Street in downtown historic Mesa, Arizona. Well, as you can see, Scooter Pops, we've made it downtown in the historic district of Mesa, Arizona. And we're going to take you through. And one of the first photos you're going to see in the videos you're going to see is the Arizona Museum of Natural History. And then we're going to walk around the block and take a look at some of the magnificent brass statues and the beautiful artwork that the city purchased some years ago. They used to lease it, but now they've since gone ahead and purchased it because people loved it so much. As I mentioned earlier in this video, the Arizona Museum of Natural History. Take a look at that. (laughs) That is cool. Oh my gosh. Wow. It looks like it's really crashing out of the out of the wall. Oh my goodness. Look at the size of this beautiful piece of artwork. Mm. My goodness. Mama protecting the babies. This is polar bears. Polar bears happen to be one of the largest of the bear family. And even though they look beautiful and cute, you don't want to play with them because they are deadly and they will kill you if they need to protect themselves or their babies. 
I've got to really take you on this one because this one has been around for a while and just nowhere have I ever seen such a beautiful statue of who else but Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at that. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And I don't know the rest of it. <laughs> you can go ahead and complete it. But isn't that gorgeous? Look at the work in this. The colors. I love this one. This might be my all-time favorite. I'm gonna do a 360 here with Humpty Dumpty. I want you to see the back. And as you can see, this is actually even signed by the artist in 2002. Even the hands have amazing detail. Okay, so I voted that this is by far my favorite. <laughs> Our second statue is coming up. You've got to see some of these in person to really believe them and appreciate them. Look at that. The detail on that is just gorgeous. And let's see here. This looks like this was John W. Pete Peters. A man who was instrumental in building the masonry construction and manufacturing business for over 59 years. He was a Mesa resident and you can only imagine how much work went into this. So that is a statue of one of the gentlemen that actually helped build Mesa, Arizona, John Pete Peters. I'm not sure if he was one of the few that joined Daniel Webster Jones on their trip down from St. George, Utah, but quite possibly could. As you see in front of us at Center and Main, that is the Mesa Art Center. What a beautiful facility. That was rebuilt a few years back and the addition was put on it. A lot of very, very well-known people come and have concerts there. There are book readings and signings all kinds of entertainment. As a matter of fact, about 15, 16 years ago, my son, Brian, used to perform with the East Valley Children's Theater. They do a once per year Broadway production held in that theater. And they are very talented people, volunteers helping the children. They teach the children how to act, how to sing. And my son went on to do many leading role performances in Denver, Colorado as a result. Up ahead on the left-hand side, you can see that is City Hall. Just beautiful. We're gonna take a walk over here. We have another brass piece. W. Larkin. Fitch. He was born in Lindsville, Arkansas, back in the 1900s. And he was graduate of the University of Arizona. And there is quite a history of this gentleman. You could certainly take a look and find out. But if you look at all the detail of this particular statue, it's just beautiful. My goodness. So let's take a walk around the other side, a little bit more west of here, and we'll go ahead and get a little more footage of some of the beauty of downtown Mesa, Arizona. Just a really pleasant day today. Nice and peaceful, pretty relaxed, 
little overcast, but temperatures in the 50s at this point. Don't think I'd want to be caught trying to take the fish out of that bear's mouth. <laughs> yeah, let's go take a look at the Nile Theater. Established in the early 1920s and still around today. It says on the building 1924. That looks like a javelina or just a very large pig, but javelinas kind of look like that. I've actually seen javelinas up close up in Baghdad, Arizona, and they're just not my favorite animals to look at. That is a beautiful sculpture. My goodness, this entire scene. Batter up. <laughs> called Big League Dreams. This clock was rebuilt by craftsmen of the custom metal shop, Eternal Timepieces. If I can get a really good shot of this, I'd like you to see it. The name of this is Keeping Time for a New Century. It replicates one that stood on this corner of the Valley National Bank from 1926 to 1958. In the year 2000, the clock was rebuilt by the city of Mesa.
have asked, who is this Scooter Pops guy? I decided that I would kind of give you an idea of who I am, where I was born, where I was raised, and a little bit about my current history. So back in 1955, I was born in a town called Amityville, Long Island. And years later, a movie came out. I'm alleged to be the star, and that is the Amityville Horror. <laughs> After all, when the doctor delivered me, my mother couldn't believe the price. The price tag was $9 and change. And, you know, they looked at me and said, well, Mrs. Robertson, I'm sorry, but you just get what you paid for. <laughs> so, <laughs> hence that not so beautiful baby that you're looking at. <laughs> and look how I Look how I turned out. Anyway, here we are growing up on Long Island, which is a beautiful place to live and grow up in a small town called Bay Shore. Has a very rich history, a wonderful high school, as you can see in the photograph. And I did graduate high school, believe it or not, and started college two years before I graduated high school and ended up in broadcasting at a radio station where I completed my internship. That was WBAB in Babylon, Long Island. And I just loved it because I always wanted to be a disc jockey since 19, no, let me think here, 1960, I believe it was, when I saw Joe Roberts on WBIC. And actually, later on, I worked for WBIC, and at the time that I worked there, it was WLIX. So, to make a long story short, I did end up in broadcasting for about 20 to 25 years, and in addition to that, went on to work for the telephone company, and I retired from the city of Phoenix about two and a half years ago. And here we are. We're in Mesa, Arizona. We got here as a transfer from... New England, I was working for a company called Nextero One, and that was the consumer or customer provided equipment of the telephone company. So I had an offer to move out to Arizona. They moved me out here, and me and my entire family moved out here in 1998. So that's how we got to Mesa. And I've been here ever since. I just love it here because it's warm and I can get on the maxi scooter anytime I want, pretty much all year, and enjoy the beautiful weather. Hi, Scooter Pops here. Thanks for watching. Whether good, bad, or ugly, hey, wait a minute. That's me. <laughs> Drop us a line. Let us know what you think and what you'd like to see on Scooter Pops on our next episode. God bless you all.